Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world of Group Tracks Asia and Joint Ventures. As you all know by now, I am BG, the Driver Development Manager here in HQ. Welcome to the eighth episode of our series, Five Minutes with BG, where we tackle tips and tricks on driver development. And today we will handle the topic load securing. Loads need to be secured by the same reason why you need to hold on to a support when riding the MRT, train or bus as a standing passenger. So here is a quick physics 101 for you. Everyone who has been a standing passenger knows that a force pulls you back when the transport starts and pushes you forward when the transport slows down or stops. This is Newton's first law of motion. An object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So let's get into it. Let's talk about load securing, shall we? By the way, as you can see, even loads appearing easy to secure may suffer damage. As I said earlier, an object strives to maintain its state of motion or rest, as shown here on the vehicles. Depending on the driver's actions, the cargo strives to maintain its direction of travel or rest. This can be described as directional forces acting on the cargo during transport. We will now explain how to control these forces, all based on basic physics. These values are what may be expected during normal driving or harsh acceleration, braking or cornering. During a crash, the forces will be higher. To make sure the load stays on the cargo deck, you have four securing methods at your disposal. The first one is blocking. It's most suitable for fragile goods that would break if strapped down, such as air cartons. The second one, containment, is the most common form of load securing, and it applies to transport of sand, rocks, liquids, gas, powders, etc. The third one, friction, is typically used with low center of gravity goods, such as pallets and in box trucks trailers to prevent the goods from sliding. The fourth one, lashing, is suitable for form stable goods that can stand the pressure from the lashings. Or cargo that have fixed securing points. Regardless of the load transported, you as a driver will use one of the combination of these four methods for securing your cargo. As you place the cargo in your truck, use the cargo itself to prevent movement. By filling the spaces between your cargo with empty pallets, airbags, etc., you reduce the potential of the cargo moving during transport. If your truck has sturdy sides to support blocking of cargo, you may use H braces, boxed goods, crates, airbags, bars, braces, stanchions, etc., to prevent the movement of heavier goods. For certain types of cargo, such as liquids, powder, sand, rocks, post sacks, etc., containment in different types of containers may be suitable. This may be tanker trucks, dump trucks, net containers, barrels, plastic or metal, or intermediate bulk containers, IBCs, etc. Friction is an excellent metho method of cargo securing for the form stable goods that cannot tilt, in particular when loaded in box vans often combined with other methods of load securing. The most common type of friction mats are rubber or load stoppers of metal. The friction mat is easy to use and can be used on all load surfaces, but the load stopper can only be used on wood decks and cargo made of wood. These are the four primary lashing techniques. Top over lashing primarily prevents tipping used when there is a high risk of tipping and the goods does not have built-in lashing points. The angle of the lashing should be between 70 and 90 degrees. Spring lashing prevents sliding or wandering. If the load is very heavy and needs to be prevented from sliding forward, sideways or backwards during driving, this technique should be used. 
the angle of the lashing should not exceed 45 degrees. Loop lashing prevents rolling and or sliding. Used when the cargo is cylindrical or longer than wide and high. Also best for stacks of pipes, rods or other long round items. Note that each loop comes in twos. That is for each loop from one side an accompanying counter loop must be placed directly behind the first one. So at the minimum there need to be at least four loops in this configuration. Here the angles are not critical. Direct lashing always used for cargo where direct lashing points are available. If the cargo has built-in lashing points these should be used if the angle for each lashing between the low deck and the cargo is somewhere between 30 and 60 degrees. There are three primary options for lashing chains, webbings and finally the traditional rope. Metal chains should be used for heavy objects or items that have sharp edges or abrasive surfaces. They need to be used with lashing points in the superstructure. Chains should be inspected often and scrapped with any indications of link deformation, rust or bends. Check the marking tags for the rated tension strength. Webbing with ratchet tensioner, a polyester or polypropylene band webbing with a ratchet tensioner is the most versatile type of lashing equipment. They can be used on loads where there are lashing points in the superstructure and if the bands do not need to cross over sharp edges or abrasive surfaces. Band webbing should be inspected often for wear. Dirty and or torn webbing loses a lot of their strength and should be replaced as soon as a rip or a tear appears. If the ratchet mechanism or hooks shows any rusting or bending they should be scrapped immediately. Check the label for the tensioning strength. Ropes are the least attractive material to use for lashing and should be the last option to use. They should never be used when they need to pass over edges or abrasive surfaces. Ropes used as lashing material should be at least 10 mm in diameter and made out of polyester or polypropylene as they do not stretch as much as natural fibers. Ropes should also be inspected often and discarded if they become dirty or torn. Best suited for securing tarpaulins over cargo sensitive to water or sunlight. Finally I will show two real life examples of load securing. The first is a curtain side trailer where all goods need to be sufficiently secured in all directions. Do note the wooden planks in the sides that may support light cargo. In this case we can see that blocking and lashing have been used. The second case is a box trailer where of course all goods also need to be sufficiently secured in all directions. In this case we can see blocking being used in several different versions by using empty pallets and by loading the goods in different levels, low at the front and higher at the rear. To facilitate training in load securing we have built a couple of load securing models that have been used at our TTTs in Thailand and MENA. For more information about this model send us an email and we will get back to you. Well, this brings us to the end of the 8th module and I hope that it has brought you some new insights. Feel free to use this module in your training and as always for any questions or comments please send them to our email. It was nice to have this interaction with you all and see you in a couple of weeks for the next module. And as always have a good one.